Welcome to our talk, an introduction to Bantu lexical loans in Hadza, given by Kirk Miller and I. Hadza is a language rich in lexical loans for many different languages. The study of the Hadza language is still in many ways in its infancy, so this talk provides a brief introduction to loan words in Hadza, which can either be traced to Bantu languages or which otherwise seem to be Bantu in origin. As an introductory note, the vast majority of data for this talk is either directly from or based on the 2013 version of Miller et al.'s unpublished Hadza lexicon. Further, this talk will be made openly accessible online shortly after its live presentation, both archived with Zenodo with the DOI on screen, as well as watchable directly on YouTube via the channel link QR code on screen. I make use of a handful of QR codes throughout this talk, so if you're interested, please feel free to scan and follow. As a note on the linguists, Kirk Miller began work with Hadza speakers in the early 2000s with a specific focus on the Hadza lexicon. He worked with uh, legacy materials of Bonnie Sands and conducted extensive data collection both in Mongola and further afield, producing the unpublished lexicon upon which much of this talk is based. I began working with the Hadza speaking community around 2019 when myself and my colleague Richard Griscom began a community-led multimedia documentation of Hadza language and cultural material. Geographically speaking, Hadza is spoken primarily in the area around Lake Easi. Some of the communities which Richard and I visited and worked in are highlighted with blue circles here. Genetically, Hadza was originally classified as a member of the so-called Khoisan phylum of languages, linking it with other languages which employ phonemic click consonants spoken far away in the southwest of the African continent. Today, it is widely recognized that Khoisan is not a coherent genetic grouping and that Hadza cannot be convincingly linked to any so-called Khoisan language or, for that matter, any other language. It is therefore best described as a language isolate. From this map, itself from a classic work on the Tanzanian Rift Valley, we can see that Hadza exists in a rich regional language ecology, with languages from many different language phyla spoken alongside or nearby the Hadza-speaking area, here highlighted in red. The most relevant languages for our talk today are the Bantu languages Ihanzu and Sukuma, specifically the Jinakeya variety of Sukuma, both highlighted here in blue. Regarding language use and attitudes towards the language, I'd like to say that this is a complex and important topic and deserves considerably more attention and nuance than I've provided on this slide. For those of us who are interested in a bit more detail, I'd encourage you to read a report of a workshop held in 2018 in which some Hadza speakers, among speakers of other languages, shared their thoughts about their language, the changes it is undergoing, and prospects for the future. This can be accessed by scanning the QR code currently on screen. A first detail that we might notice is that there is huge variation in estimates for the number of people who speak Hadza. Work by anthropologist Nicholas Blurton Jones provides a figure of 1,000, and work by the Languages of Tanzania Project gives more than 6,000. My colleague Richard Griscom and I, based on our documentary work, have a feeling that the figure is probably somewhere around 2,000. In virtually all cases, Hadza people of all ages, including the youngest children, continue to use Hadza. But it is important to recognize that though the Hadza people continue to use and transmit their language, the speaker community is a small population which lacks access to healthcare, education, political representat representation, and many of whom rely on the resources of a fragile forest ecosystem, face threats uh, that are significant and existential. Uh, most Hadza speakers recognize that the way that they speak is markedly different from other languages of Tanzania, and my impression is that there is a considerable amount of pride in its use, both as a medium through which Hadza culture and everyday life is transmitted, and also as a code maintaining and establishing this sparsely populated community across a relatively large geographical area. At the same time, it is not uncommon to encounter Tanzanians from other ethnic groups who believe that Hadza simply is not a language. In order to get a feel for how the language sounds and looks, I would like to now play a short clip of Kaunda Umno singing a traditional Hadza song. <laughs> Bye, bye, ah, yo, cool, it doesn't. 
Now, I usually don't use songs for these kinds of introductions, but I will here because this is a recording of precisely the song represented in these 1997 field notes from Bonnie Sands. Essentially, this song is about encountering a baobab tree that doesn't bear any fruit. Importantly, the refrain is something like Kasonso Kanoka. In these notes, Bonnie's informant explains that Kasonso is the name of a person renowned for climbing up fast, and Kanoka is a fast pronunciation of Kana Anika, which means to climb up fast. We will return to this example later, but not before we take into account today's central topic, that is, the existence of extensive Bantu lexical loans in Hadza. As mentioned above, these loans are primarily from Ihanzu, Sukuma, specifically of the Jinakiya variety, here highlighted in blue with Hadza in red, from a map from Balamoselli's 2001 doctoral dissertation, and more recently, a third Bantu language, Swahili, which is spoken throughout Tanzania and the wider region as a lingua franca. There are also forms which are probably from Bantu, but whose source has not been identified with any certainty. We'll now take each of these languages in order, starting with Ihanzu. Perhaps the easiest loans to identify are those for which Hadza and Ihanzu share a form that is not used in Jinakia or Swahili, such as here with the form Manune for mushroom. Because the semantic data we have for Hadza, Ihanzu, and Jinakia is less certain, loans based on semantics are more speculative, but based on what we currently know, the Hadza form Gosema for to accuse seems like it might have been borrowed from Ihanzu versus Swahili where Kusema is more frequently used to mean to say. Finally, a hallmark of Ihanzu is a lunition process by which the segment S has lunited in some environments to H. As such, the Hadza Iato is most probably a loan from Ihanzu, given the S is preserved in Jinakia. However, because we do not know the timing of this sound change in relation to Ihanzu's contact with Hadza, the inverse is not true. That is, if the Hadza word contains an S in which the Ihanzu now has an H, this does not mean it cannot have come from Ihanzu. Rather, this loan could have entered Hadza from Ihanzu before the S to H sound change took place. Should also be noted that in a 2016 paper, Kirk identifies significant Bantu influence on Hadza kinship terms, perhaps the most significant influence being from Ihanzu. Moving now to Jinakia Sukuma, one rule of thumb for identifying loans from Jinakia, or wider Sukuma for that matter, is the occurrence of the consonant B in the word where one might expect to see a Bantu noun class marker. Here we can see that the Hadza busato from a loan may be a loan from Jinakia kia busadu. Vowel quality is another way to distinguish, but obviously for various reasons this is not as straightforward and shouldn't be seen as definitive. I include this final example because it shows the degree of semantic knowledge necessary to establish some of these as connected. First, the Hadza game Lukuchuko involves tossing a piece of bark against a tree and betting on whether it will land concave or convex side up. If it lands upright, the term used is guera. The link to Jinakea guela to become white might seem a stretch, but Maselli explains that this word may have come to mean to become white in Jinakea because of the white on an animal's stomach, which would be exposed if the animal were to lay upside down. As such, the semantic link is established in this way. It should also be noted that much Hadza number terminology also seems to come from Sukuma. 
Moving now to Swahili, uh, distinguishing loans is often a bit easier as terms are often additive loans. That is, they fill new semantic fields in Hansa, such as terms for cash, like hela bee, money, which comes from Swahili hela, for money. This is not surefire, however, as the Swahili forms may have come into Hadza through another Bantu language. It is somewhat harder to say whether the verb for to write has entered Hadza directly through Swahili or via Ihanzu or another Bantu language first. Finally, not all possible Swahili loans are additive. Take this form pafa pafa, for example, for clavicle or collarbone, which is certainly not a new item in Hadza, but bears a tantalizing resemblance to the Swahili for lung, Pafu. I'd like now to offer a brief word on other forms which look like Bantu loans but are currently unidentifiable. The first reason as to why these loans might not be identifiable as definitively from one Bantu language versus another is because many Bantu words resemble each other. Take this example where the word nzieko in Hadza resembles each of the words given in Ihanzu, Jinakia, and Swahili in roughly equal measure. Furthermore, there are words in Hadza which resemble reconstructed forms from Bantu, but do not resemble words from contemporary Bantu languages in the area in any straightforward way. This is the case with to shake or sway from the proto-Bantu form here. Finally, there are words which, to put it crudely, feel Bantu. This applies most strongly to words containing nasal stop sequences common to Bantu languages. The form zingiri has a possible cognate in neighboring South Cushitic languages, but this form itself may possibly be a loan from Bantu. In terms of what the larger contexts surrounding these language contact situations look like, this is really a question for a wider range of methods than solely linguistic. Though I do have some brief comments. I've presented in the past about Hadza Ihanzu contacts being based on the Hadza sharing established knowledge of, on the environment with expanding Ihanzu farmers, as well as incorporating into Ihanzu communities through marriage. Indeed, the opposite, Ihanzu people living with and marrying into Hadza families, is also reported in the literature. Amani Lusakello in an earlier talk notes that the Sukuma people of Simiu have oral historical accounts of fleeing drought to live with the Hadzabe people until they could farm again. An earlier account by Senior describes massive Sukuma salt caravans to the western edge of Lake Easi, which may have brought over 30,000 Sukuma-speaking people to the area every year. Which, to conclude, brings us back to Bonnie's notes made in Mangola on the eastern shore of Lake Easi. We will recall that for her consultant Gudo, the phrase Kasonso Kanoka refers to a man quickly climbing up a barren tree, possibly with connotations of fertility. Another angle is that this, is, this form is a part nativized from an Ihanzu or Jinakia phrase, something like Kasunsu Kanoka, which would mean the curdled milk smelled bad, possibly one way to express distaste at a tree which doesn't produce any food. It is, of course, just as likely that these meanings exist side by side, reflecting various states of historical and contemporary diglossia and cultural contact between Hadza-speaking people and Bantu-speaking people over a long period of time. Thank you, and here are our references.